I'm thinking about time and the universe and I guess a kind of causality. And this is partly inspired by some of the stuff that uh, Professor Anton and one or two of the people have been talking about in terms of final causes, teleology, uh, you know, as opposed to, you know, whatever those other cause, causes are, efficient cause, something like that. Yeah, the one we're used to. Uh, and I guess I'm putting this into the framework of, uh, because I'm thinking in cartoon physics, the uh, into the framework of sucking and blowing. Sucking and blowing. You know, I'm, I'm kind of imagining teleology, you know, that, uh, that, that all this has an end point in mind. You know, it's all going somewhere. It might not be exactly preordained, but it is going somewhere, just like this train is going somewhere. You know, there's a kind of a sense in which that train is uh, is being drawn towards its final destination. You know what I mean? In the timetable, it'll say what time that train is due to arrive in Holmes Chapel or in Nutsford or wherever else, to Stockport, and then up to Manchester Piccadilly. It'll, there'll be a timetable about where that train is going. And uh, in, a, in, a, in a kind of way, the train is sort of, not literally of course, it's kind of being sucked along those tracks towards the, its final destination in Manchester Piccadilly Station. That's its, the reason for its movement is its, is its you know, is its, uh, is its ultimate terminus. That's its motivation, that's its cause. That's the, that's the, yeah, yeah. Uh, so in a way, as I say, that's, it's, it's kind of being sucked along the track, uh, metaphorically speaking. Well, I'm not sure if you can say the same in more general terms about life, and I'm uh, I'm sure there wasn't what Professor Anton had in mind, but you know, but certainly people like Teilhard de Chardin seem to be saying, seem to write as if that was the case, that there is an end point, an omega point, that is kind of sucking us onwards, sucking us towards it, and all of the uh, the rigors that we're going through now is just because we're being dragged across a piece of particularly rough track. Uh, I don't know. I mean the alternative is of course is the blow model. And I guess this makes kind of more sense in terms of physics. Because I think when we talk about, you know, real physics I'm talking about, not the kind of metaphysics. When we talk about physics it seems like we do tend to use uh, blow metaphors, don't we? There he goes, another train being sucked towards Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, yeah, when we talk about that, we talk about it as if it's being... Uh, right. Right there. Yeah, we talk about it as if the uh, the universe is kind of blowing us forward. You know, it, we use phrases like Big Bang, you know what I mean? Like something exploded and there's this big wind that swept away from this into this singular point and, and blew the universe into existence. And it's sometimes called the inflationary universe, you know, that early period just after this supposed Big Bang inflationary universe as if there's some blowing up of a balloon you know this wind is just kind of rushing out and it's not really that but I think that's kind of the image that's in mind there and uh, and all these kind of dominoes that are falling and that we call time and all these these causal events that seem to be proceeding one after the other is kind of as a result of that wind just kind of blowing the universe into existence one moment at a time uh, yeah, and that makes kind of more sense. It's to me, at least, obviously. Because uh, the only time that uh, you get this sucky universe where the ends determine the progress is when you're doing things like train timetables, and they're pretty fucking sucky anyway. I'm down by the fort. Uh, so what? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know really. I suppose I'm just reminded here of Walter Benjamin. Walter Benjamin, I suppose I should say. Walter Benjamin. He wrote this, uh, this book a while back, I don't know, 1930s probably, Illuminations. And part of it was turned into a song by Laurie Anderson in an album called Strange Angels. Really beautiful song called The Dream Before. Uh, I'll see if I can find it actually and put a link to it. I want to hear it right now. Um, the second verse of this song by Laurie Anderson, The Dream Before, is this quote, essentially this quotation from Walter Benjamin. And he's talking about history. 
and time and progress and the disaster that we all seem to be living in. This explosion, you know, that we are all on the, on the, on the outskirts of. Uh, we're all kind of in the rubble of. And uh, he describes it using this figurative speech as the central kind of motif in this quote is this figure of an angel. He's not talking, he's not a literal angel, he's just using it figuratively. So there's this angel, and it's the angel of history, he describes it. And the angel of history is kind of looking out for us and he's kind of responsible for us, but and and, and can see that there's all this crap, you know, because <laughs> the, the angel can see that things are not going according to plan. It can see that the Industrial Revolution was really interesting. It produced all these nice stuff, but unfortunately it led to sweatshops. And the angel doesn't like that and would like to fix it. And then the angel can see um, uh, nuclear power and can see the possibility of there being, you know, little nuclear power plants in every room the size of a walnut. No one will ever have to use fossil fuels again. The angel can see that. But the angel can also see Bikini and any Weetok and Nagasaki and Hiroshima and... and, and and the various mushroom clouds that have plagued the planet since. And the angel would like to fix that too, you know. And if I can extrapolate a wee bit, the angel can probably see a bit further back than that, you know, beyond human human ingenuity, and can probably see the millions of years of one animal killing another animal, and one animal cowering in fear while another animal prepared itself to attack, you know. All those thousands and millions of years of what Gary would refer to as consumption and reproduction, but there's probably other ways of talking about it as well. You know, the kind of horrors that biblical and religious texts generally try to excuse. You know, the angel can see that shit and wants to fix it. But the image that Walter Benjamin has is this idea of the, the storm. He says there's a storm blowing from paradise. A storm blowing from paradise. And uh, this storm there's this huge wind behind it, and the wind has caught the angel under the wings. And so the angel is being blown backwards, away from paradise, and backwards into the future. And the angel, can, all, the, all the angel can do, he can't go back, because this wind is so strong. And all it can do is watch the pile of rubble, and the pile of detritus, and the pile of tragedy and suffering just build up at its feet. It wants to go back and fix things, to repair the things that have been broken, as Laurie Anderson puts it. But this storm is preventing it from doing so. In, um, in Walter Benjamin, this storm is called progress. They say, uh, progress. I think we could probably extend that to, this storm is called life. Yeah. So, in short, to sum up, <laughs> The universe doesn't suck, the universe blows.